Hi everyone, I'm Akshay Gill from MakerMax, and today we're going to be talking about the BYD Blade Battery. Now the BYD Blade Battery has been in the news quite a lot this year, and mostly towards uh, because of the marketing that was done towards its safety. Now battery safety has been a topic of rising concern this year and the previous few years because of the fast adoption of electric vehicles and any uh, types of battery operated devices that are more performance hungry. Now because of this fast adoption, there are a lot, lot of companies that are trying to scramble and create solutions, um, create electric cars, electric bikes that have not performed so well in the field, that there have been issues that have led to battery fires. Some of these have been caused by cell manufacturing, some of these have been called, caused by systemic, systemic issues, some of these have been caused by lack of quality control procedures. But overall, we can see that there's a rising trend or rising interest in battery safety. Now BYD, you can think about um, this as a, on, on a marketing side or a technical advantage that BYD wanted to put out with their blade battery, but their prime focus in putting out this batteries marketing message was that this is the safest battery around. This is what you should choose for your high performance platform, be it an electric vehicle, be it a energy storage device, partner with us and use our battery technology. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what are some of the technical advantages of BYD blade battery and what are some of the things that are more just marketing mumbo jumbo. Okay, so, the BYD blade battery is a prismatic, uses prismatic type cells. And as you know from some of my previous videos, there's are, there are three main form factors that are available in the market today, which are cylindrical, pouch, and prismatic. Now, the prismatic form factor offers a hard casing around the cell's in interiors and it has a more of a prism or a rectangular type structure. Now conventional or usual prismatic type batteries, they are blockier. They have a lot of layers of the cell's internals inside it, and they're in the shape, uh, shape of a, a block, a prism, or a fatter rectangle. But BYD, their blade type cell, they put out a thin and a long battery, right? So conventional prismatic cells have a more blockier shape and the BYD cell is something more on uh, resembling this type of a structure. So it's thinner, it's longer, and the width is less. So width and the, uh, the, the breadth and the width is less, the thickness and the width is less, but the length is long. And with this, they've been able to achieve, this structure, they've been able to achieve better safety. So to understand some of the Technically, some of the advantages uh, that make this battery safer, let's start by what BYD told us in their unveiling attempt, uh, uh, event earlier this year about the BYD battery. And they said three main things. One was that they've used an LFP-based chemistry. Two, they talked about how using a blade-like structure, a thin blade-like structure, structure offers two distinct advantages. One is structural support to the pack. Right, so with this, what they talked about in the event was, if you look at a conventional battery pack, you would have maybe three or four cross members or structural members that are keeping the battery pack intact and providing structure to the vehicle that it is in. 
talking specifically about an electric vehicle application here. What BYD said is that each of these cells acts as a cross member, acts as a structural member uh, of the battery pack, and because of which the, um, the manufacturers, the automotive manufacturers that are, that, that, uh, are going to use this type of cell, the blade type of cell, can completely forego module level technology. So they can go straight from the blade cell to a pack level technology. And each of these blade cells are, is going to offer structure to the battery pack, something similar to what uh, Tesla has talked about in their battery day event. And they also want, with their 4680 cell, cylindrical cell technology, want to make the, the battery pack as an integral part of the vehicle. Offer, and the battery pack, instead of being a weight or a something to carry for the vehicle, it is a structural member of the body of the vehicle. It offers structural advantages, structural support to the lower body of the vehicle. And that's what BYD is a similar type of things that they're promising with their blade, their blade battery pack. Now they also talked about that if you have multiple, if you have multiple of these to form your pack, right? So they talked about like you need about a hundred of the BYD um, blade cells to form a pack. On top of it, they have some proprietary honeycomb like uh, structure that uh, that is on top and the bottom of the battery pack. So some honeycomb-like structural members that are on top and bottom once your full battery pack is made that offer some additional strength um, and additional safety to the pack. But our focus in this video is talking specifically about the BYD cells that offer and their uh, decision to go with a long member type, um, type cell structure or cell form factor instead of the regular block type prismatic structure. What else did they say? They said that they put the cell through, the BYD cell, uh, the blade cell, through a lot of different types of tests, including nail penetration. You can find some videos uh, on YouTube about the nail penetration test that uh, BYD had put the blade cell through. They'll show you a NMC test first, NMC cell being tested not the blade NMC, um, but a general NMC prismatic cell being tested, a general LFP prismatic cell being tested, more like a blockier shape, and then the BYD a nail penetration test. And they show the distinct, distinct advantages that the BYD blade cell offers, some, some of that we're gonna be discussing. They talked about um, crash testing, overcharge testing, over temperature testing. And in all the different tests, uh, what they saw and what they promised was that these cells, the blade cells, performed extremely well. There was no smoke or no fire in any of these tests that they had performed. Now, the only data that I was able to find so far was the uh, from the nail penetration tests that they had posted. Um, I was not able to find any specific data on the test um, variables and the length of the test and the equipment that was used in the test um, for the other three tests, the crash, the um, over temperature and the overcharging. So we're gonna be focusing more on the nail penetration test um, that, was, that, that we have information on to see how the blade, making it into a blade structure is, a better, uh, is better technically for the, for the battery pack. Okay, so the last one is the tests. So let's start with the first, the LFP chemistry. The first advantage that BYD has marketed in their, LF, in their LFP based BYD blade cells is that in an LFP type chemistry, we have less chances of a thermal runaway. So let's understand why that is. Now, if you look at some of the test videos that BYD has posted for their nail penetration test, you'll see that they are showing a comparison with an NMC uh, chemistry. And an NMC chemistry has been preferred, uh, so far at least, in electric vehicles because of the higher energy density that it offers. Right? So because of that, NMC was taking precedence until 
about mid-year, mid this year, when LFP suddenly got a comeback. And that was mainly due to some of the supply constraints of the NMC cathode. And LFP was able to, there, there have been adva advancements in, on the LFP type cathode that have brought its energy density to be not equal, but similar, um, not so much less either than the, uh, compared to the NMC cathode. So because of this, LFP cathode has taken some of the market share back in the electric vehicle space. And even Tesla was talking about bringing uh, the delivery times of some of the Model 3 vehicles, Model 3 or Model Y uh, vehicles back into back by a couple of months for customers if they choose their CATL based um, LFP type battery pack. If they choose that battery pack, then then they can ship much sooner. And if they choose in their regular NCA type uh, battery pack, then it'll take a little bit longer for the delivery. So there was some supply constraints on, uh, I think the nickel side that caused this. And so because of that LFP, took some market share back this year. But LFP has a, a lot of times been marketed as a safer chemistry. And the main reason for that is because in thermal runaway, we have, well, thermal runaway, if you've taken our battery safety course, then you understand that thermal runaway is caused due to a negative chain reaction which is triggered by a high temperature or a high pressure scenario. So the high temperature scenario inside the cell causes some reactions to be unlocked, which were not, which wouldn't have taken place if that type of high temperature, high pressure scenario didn't exist inside the cell. But because that high temperature, high pressure now exists inside the cell, some of these new reactions, which are exothermic in nature, these get, these get unlocked. And when I say unlock, they start to cause um, a negative chain reaction. So you have high temperature, high pressure inside the cell. Some reaction starts happening, which are um, chemically exothermic in nature, because of which more heat is generated. And that heat increases the cell internal temperature even more, then causing more types of exothermic reactions that then uh, basically keep increasing the cells internal temperature until it catches fire. Now that until it catches fire part is interesting because for catching fire, you need oxygen. Now the, if you choose a NMC type cell or NMC type cathode, if an NMC type cathode goes through thermal runaway, it has a higher ten tendency to release oxygen as a byproduct in the thermal runaway stages. Because oxygen is released as a byproduct of thermal runaway, this oxygen has a higher tendency to catch on fire at uh, the later stages of thermal runaway, which is why we see that a NMC type cell has a higher probability of catching on fire when it goes into thermal runaway. And an LFP type cell or NF p-type cathode, when it goes through thermal runaway, then the byproducts don't have oxygen. And because of which, uh, the probability of the cell catching fire, even if the temperature of the cell increases, the probability of it catching fire is reduced. And this is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why LFP is uh, marketed as a safe for chemistry to go with. So LFP, that's how they got their first advantage, but that's not something new. We have LFP type batteries, LFP type prismatic batteries. Um, many, many different manufacturers make those types of batteries. The second advantage that BYD has marketed is the pack structure. So, in a uh, if you when you're designing a battery pack from cells, a battery pack has a length and a width based on the uh, the vehicle or the product that it's going to be fitting in. 
Now, if your cell length, so say your cell length is L1 and your pack length is L, if your pack length is much larger than cell length, this uh, means that you need to put many of these cells in a series parallel combination to extend into the length of the pack, right? And because of this, yes, you might be able to electrically connect uh, these cells in some way, but there is a mechanical disconnect between the cells. And because of this mechanical disconnect, they can't offer a structure or structural support to the pack. So structural support has to come through other means, which is usually done through uh, cross members or structural members or structural beams that are put, right? You have structural beams every so often in the pack and you have cells in the middle. And at that point, the cells, right? And then at that point, the cells are nothing but a weight that the pack is carrying. And what uh, the industry is moving towards is a cell-to-pack type of technology. Before, cells were put in modules. So in this, I've just sh shown four cells in series. But actually, if you open a battery pack uh, of any type of EV that main, uh, the main players are, uh, are manufacturing today and shipping today, you'll find the cells are separated into modules. So the cells are separated into modules, which are a combination of cells in a certain series and parallel configuration, right? And these modules offer some advantage. They offer, you, you could split up manufacturing of your lines, your manufacturing lines in a way that you can first finish uh, the modules. You can go from the cell level, which would be your smallest subunit you can get to the module level um, in a, a factory line and that factory line, the end of that factory line produces modules. Those modules are then used by the next line, which makes packs. And there are advantages of doing that. One of the advantages is, for example, serviceability or handling. When you handle a pack, if you have higher pack failures, either in manufacturing in testing or in service in the field, if you have higher pack failures, you want to make it in a way that if one cell fails, for example, maybe nothing needs to be done. But if a group of cell fails, uh, cells fail, then instead of having to change the full pack, uh, you're able to change just one module or one group of cells um, and replace another module in there. Then that offers service advantages, cost advantages to the manufacturer, and uh, possibly time advantages of getting um, your vehicle serviced instead of just if if there's no modules and if you only have cells then picking cell number 522 from the pack is going to be a tedious process right so offering a module uh, type technology allowed the industry to get to where it was today but now since battery technology is getting much better and there's a lot more trust in battery technology, a lot less failures. Uh, because of that, more, more and more manufacturers are talking about going straight from the cell to the pack level. And with it comes the structural advantages of doing so. Because with modules, you have interconnects, you have uh, wires that are running between modules and the modules, since they don't, uh, they don't run to, to the length of the pack, they can't offer structural integrity to the pack. Um, but cells, in this case, the BYD blade uh, cells, what the company has is marketing is that the cells can be shipped in different lengths to match. There is a certain threshold, there's a certain length range in which the cells ship the blade cells. And these can be uh, manufactured to match approximately the length of your pack so that they offer uh, to be not just the cells for your pack but also the structural members of the pack so they they, they give structural integrity to the pack and they offer um, and then they offer uh, obviously the energy now I haven't seen uh, cell 
our pack designs yet, which just use the cells and the blade cells as their structural members. There are still other uh, structural uh, mechanical members that have been placed in the packs um, that that allow for the pack to pass all the safety standards under all kinds of automotive uh, standardized testing. But the blade batteries, because they extend the length of the pack, they, they definitely offer some structural advantage to the pack. Not a full solution yet towards providing a, a, a full structural pack, but a step in that direction, in my opinion. Right, so this is similar to what we've seen with Tesla also uh, now recently showed in their Giga Berlin event how they have arranged cylindrical cells, the 4680 uh, cylindrical tabulous cells to, um, in, in a way to give structural integrity to the pack so that you don't need cross members, you don't need structural members to, um, uh, to, to provide the structural integrity of the pack, right? So that's this, where the industry is moving and BYD is definitely moving in that direction with their blade cell design. Now the third thing that BYD talked about when marketing the uh, blade technology is the different tests that they have run. Now they talked about four different tests. They talked about nail penetration, crash testing, they talked about over temperature and overcharging. Although they've only released videos, uh, or at least that I've seen, of the nail penetration test. So let's talk more about what happened there. Now in a nail penetration test, what happens is uh, on a bench, you have the cell that is placed and uh, a nail is inserted into the cell all through, right, throughout the, uh, through the cell. And then different parameters are measured, uh, which is voltage, temperature, sometimes um, pressure maybe. Uh, but in this case, we had voltage and temperature being measured. Now, the reason for this test is to see if in case of an accident, uh, if the cell was to be, there was cell protrusion through a cross member of the, of the vehicle or some sort of a uh, just mechanical member of, of this, the vehicle that was in the accident or another cross member that penetrated into the battery pack and the cells were penetrated, what would the reaction of the cells be? And they've sh uh, showcased an NMC-based prismatic cell, an LFP-based prismatic cell, and an LFP-based blade-type cell. And we can see that an NMC-type cell uh, goes through thermal runaway and produces oxygen as a byproduct because of which it catches fire. Um, and an LFP cell, just a regular LFP cell, which is thicker uh, than a blade cell, that um, the temperature rises, the voltage drops, and the, um, there's smoke that is released. Still safer than LFP or, or the NMC uh, nail penetration, but, but uh, not as safe as depicted as the blade battery. So in the blade type cell, you have, you'll see a bench, you'll see the blade cell on the bench, and we have a nail penetrating through the blade battery pack, uh, blade, uh, blade cell, and you can see a very minor change in voltage and uh, temperature. They don't show the full test, but they said it reached to 60 degrees Celsius. All right, so the reason on why that's happening, if in, in let's just compare the same chemistry, right? So we have an LFP based, and then we have the blade. So in the LFP based prismatic cell, there is still uh, some smoke that is released, temperature rise, voltage drop. The reason is because in a blade type, uh, blade type uh, cell, you basically have a longer cell member, but less number of overlap. Let's see what I mean by that. So here, um, th th both of these cells started as rolls, right? You have a separator roll, you have the anode roll, and you have the you have the cathode roll, right? So you have roll of the separator, roll of the anode, and a roll of the cathode. And this is either cut or folded uh, to form the pack. 
and or to form the cell. And in this case, the uh, the the, 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 cell, the cell length is a lot longer, which means that the number of overlaps in for let's let's start with this regular LFP cell. So in a regular LFP cell, let's say I have this is the length. And then that's my cathode, and then I have my separator. So the so the rolls were folded in a, in this type of format, right? And then this is compressed, and that makes my cell internals in such a way. Right, so I have my anode, cathode, and separator. But now, if I think of the cell being penetrated by a nail, if the cell gets penetrated by a nail, then there's going to be a lot of members that are penetrated. Uh, a lot of uh, anode, cathode uh, shorts that have happened. Because the nail doesn't only go through one member, it goes through multiple of these members, right? Just because the cell is thicker and less in length and size, when the nail penetrates in the test, it's going through many of these layers and penetrating all the way through and then causing uh, that short, that internal short to happen, which uh, causes a uh, thermal runaway reaction inside the cell. Now in a blade, What's happening in a blade type cell is you're starting with a longer member, right? And a simplest, I would say the simplest blade type cell can be made by not folding at all, right? So you just have one long sheet of separator, one long sheet of anode, and one long sheet of cathode, right? That you just cut from these rolls place it in the structure and form the blade cell. That's the simplest way you can make a thin and a long cell, right? And let's say that that was the case. Then in this case, the nail would only penetrate through one layer of the anode, cathode, um, anode separator and cathode. And in, it essentially just cause one internal short between these layers. So the short still exists. It's not that the internal short doesn't exist, but there's one, in, in this case, there's multiple. So the way to compare apples to apples here is if I took multiple nails, if I took multiple of these nails and penetrated the cell, uh, then this would be, my bet is that this, cell, the blade cell, will have a similar similar reaction to what was seen in a uh, LFP type cell. All right, so that's one way to look at the nail penetration test and why this, uh, the blade type uh, cell is offering a larger advantage. So I don't think of it as a technical advantage. You can think of it as that this test um, this test is talking about penetrating the pack, uh, penetrating the cell on a single point. And in a single point, the blade type cell offers better safety. But what if it was a multi-point failure? What if I put a bed of nails and penetrated the bed of nails um, through this versus through this? Then as the number of nails that are penetrating the, the cell increase, I feel that the, the performance or the safety performance of the blade type cell will converge to a regular LFP type cell. Now, one of the other things that came to my mind is what if the blade battery pack or the blade cell is nothing but a bunch of cells in series. So we see the blade uh, cell as a big one, right? A long cell like this. But what if inside it, BYD has a bunch of cells in series? forming the blade 
uh, cell that they showcase. There's no uh, teardown video videos yet or images yet uh, that I found of the blade cell. If you, if you have them, if you know about them, then feel free to post below. But I did come across a patent from 2019 uh, from BYD that BYD has that talks about a similar structure of arranging cells in series through a proprietary technology um, to connect them together to form a larger cell. So that came to my mind. Maybe the blade cell has multiple of these cells in series using that type of proprietary connecting structure that they have patented in 2019. But the reason why I think that the blade cells are actually, it's actually just one cell with one internal is when I looked at the nail penetration video that BYD put out, if, for example, this was the structure that the BYD blade had, just if, assuming, and we penetrated a nail through, through one of these cells, and that cell went into thermal runaway, and that cell uh, lost its voltage, the, if you look at the nail penetration test, that shows that the voltage of the, the main cell, the big cell, doesn't really go down that much. It, it goes down by um, 0 0.03 volts or 30 millivolts <clears throat> over, uh, over an hour of testing, which is no, almost nothing, right? So if this type of a structure of series of cells were to be, uh, there, there, there would have been a nail penetrated through one of these cells, then uh, this series connection and, and this cell voltage was lost, then the series connection would have also have been lost and then we would, couldn't have read the cell voltage of three point some volts here. Right. So that's, that was one of the reasons why I kind of disregarded the idea that inside the blade uh, cell that we see, there's multiple cells correct, connected in series. And the other reason why I took away that idea is, um, is because if that was the case, then to market this type of a structure as a, a uh, to, uh, for this type of structure to give structural integrity to a battery pack, the, this type of connection between the cells needs to be something really good. It needs to be mechanically sound and, um, I didn't see that through the patent. I didn't see that that was the focus. The focus was uh, focus with electrical connection and some uh, liquid injection into the elect for electrolytes into the cells. I didn't see that the patent talks about mechanical uh, forming mechanical in integrity between the connection here. So because that those two reasons, I feel that the idea or the thought that there are multiple cells that are placed in series inside the blade, um, the blade cell that is showcased is not correct. But if you disagree with that, if you have other thoughts, feel free to comment below. But that was my conclusion. So where are we at this point? So we've discussed the LFP chemistry, we've discussed the structural integrity, uh, blade cells giving in structural integrity to the pack, and the um, different tests, and we covered the nail penetration tests. So how do I feel about the blade pack? Well, the way I feel is that just the nail penetration test wasn't enough for me to um, put all the money, put all my money on uh, BYD's blade technology. <clears throat> I would like to see more types of testing. If nail penetration is the test, then I would like to see that uh, what happens when multiple points of the of the um, of the cell are uh, are penetrated because in a regular pack scenario, in a regular pack scenario, if you have if you have a pack, a battery pack, and with multiple cells, and then you have one with uh, just the BYD blade cell extending to the length of the pack, a nail penetration test that was done uh, talks about in a realistic scenario would be that a member protrudes this pack in such a way, just one nail protruding the pack in such a way. And this is more likely if the pack had a smaller surface area, 
it's it's less likely if the pack had a larger surface area. If the pack has a larger or the cell has a larger surface area, then the, the likelihood of a uh, a member or multiple members uh, hitting or penetrating the one single cell is larger when the cell surface area is larger. So the nail penetration test, I see, I feel should be, um, should the, the number of nails should should be respective to the surface area that the cell is uh, uh, the cell is introducing. So to an apples to apples comparison of a a smaller prismatic lithium ion cell uh, going through nail penetration would be if the blade cell was put through multiple nails penetrating through it. And I'd also like to see the data coming in from the over temperature tests, the, uh, the overcharging scenario and the uh, crash tests, because those were just talked about in the presentation, but no actual data. Uh, there was no actual data that I could find on those tests. So conclu in conclusion, I feel, yes, it's a step in the right direction, the BYD blade, uh, the battery pack and the BYD blade cells, LFP seems to be the way the industry is move, moving because of the concern of safety and because of some of the supply constraints of, uh, of nickel and cobalt. And uh, we've seen that the industry is moving towards a structural battery pack and that can be accomplished mostly by a cylindrical type cell or a prismatic cell because those are the form factors that have a hard casing. A pouch type battery pack can't offer a structural to be a structural member because it doesn't have strict structural integrity on its own. So in cylindrical designs and prismatic designs, what we've seen with the Tesla 4680 cylindrical and then the BYD blade prismatic cell, this is where the industry is moving. This is where BYD is moving. This is where Tesla is moving. And this is where the main players will move going straight from the cell to pack. In terms of the blade, I, I, I definitely think it's a good innovation, but it, it's, it want, it's the first step towards in your uh, battery technology, safer battery technology, definitely using LFP. But what I would like to see is more independent testing, more openness towards test results so we can have a better understanding of what is happening in the cell's internals when it is being put through different types of tests different types of scenarios and maybe right now we saw recently one of the uh, BYD Han vehicles Han is uh, BYD Han is like a sedan that BYD sells and that had gone through some independent testing and uh, it had ignited this the pack had ignited uh, two days after the test so it had gone through some crash testing independent crash testing and the vehicle at the time of the crash was okay, but two days after just sitting there, uh, it, it caught on fire. And BYD issued a statement uh, about this test as well, and they talked about how the coolant that was used by uh, the, the testing facility for this vehicle was a conductive coolant. And because of that, there was a, uh, because of the crash, there was a coolant leak in the pack, and that coolant leak uh, caused because it was conductive, caused a short inside the pack, causing the thermal runaway reaction, causing the vehicle fire. It was interesting to see how that was two days after the crash. But that was BYD's statement. So more such independent testing will tell us more about how this blade battery pack performs in the field and under different scenarios. But this is the information um, we have to allow, and that's the uh, based on that information that's what I have to share till now. Happy to know your thoughts uh, about what I've shared or if anything I've missed or any other details that you have, uh, please share it below. And uh, thanks so much for watching.